Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, we're back taping again since the, the virus has kind of broken out. We've getting, had two weeks of service at the church house and now we're back to taping it. But uh, to get the message out, we just appreciate the uh, social media and that. It gives us a chance to reach our people even when they can't come in. At least we can reach out through the social media. So we, we're thankful for that. Pray that this pandemic will get away from us. Maybe they'll come up with a vaccine or something so we can get back to more of a normal life if that'll ever happen again. I'm not sure. But we're, tonight we're going to be, or this morning rather, we're going to be in the Romans chapter 12. Uh, I've entitled this Living the Life, Romans chapter 12, verses 14 to 21. Uh, the idea is that we, as a Christian, uh, we're living in the United States of America in 2020. It, it's a challenge. Uh, everything that's going on in our country with the pandemic and we know then the stock market and the economic situation and job losses and all those things and, and then we see the, uh, the protesting and the rioting and everything's going on in our nation and just everything is kind of chaotic right now so uh, this, uh, this morning we're going to start off with this message about living the life and, and then over the next three weeks I'll be in chapter 13 of Romans and we'll be looking at what it means to, as a Christian, how we respond to civil authority, the, the civil government, how we respond to one another, and uh, how we respond to redeeming the time. And those will be the things we'll look at in, over the next three weeks. But uh, this is kind of an introductory to that, if you would. I just want you to get to, get into the mood of understanding what it means to be a Christian. Um, we're in a, in a situation where you know, it's, it's sometimes it's challenging. Emotions get involved, uh, other forces get involved, try to draw us one way or the other. And, and so we're going to see what the Bible says. And that's what I want to stick with. And I, I surely am striving to keep my own personal ideas out of some of this. I don't, sometimes it's easy to give a personal opinion, but I wanted to stick with what God says. And if we do what God says, then we know we're going to be doing the best. Now, uh, there's always sometimes consequences for things when, we, when we're obedient to the Lord and, and when we do things contrary. And, are counter to what the, the world wants to do, but, but we need to be able to stand firm. And it comes from the conviction of knowing who we are. Uh, we're Christians and, you know, no matter what our circumstances are, that doesn't change. We're a child of God and He's put us here and He's going to take care of us as we go through it. And we know that someday is coming when we will leave this old world. But in the meantime, how are we to live as a Christian? So I'm just entitled as living the life, living the life of a Christian in this day and time. So we're going to be looking again at uh, chapter 12 of Romans. Looking at verses 14 to 21 then. We can back up just a little bit. I'm just going to read about three or four verses prior to verse 14. But start with verse 9. And this one says, he says, Let love be without dissimulation. Let love be without hypocrisy. And uh, that kind of sets the key for the rest of this chapter, really. That all of the things that we do when we talk about how we act and how we interact and react with people, we want it to be done real, be true, be open, be honest. And he says right here, he says, uh, don't uh, be without dissimulation, be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor and preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. So we see kind of the, uh, the foundation, if you would, here as we look at this, how we're to, to live as we prepare for this. But I, I like the first part of that. He says, be without that dissimulation, be without hypocrisy. Be real in your dealings with one another. And, and uh, it... As we look at this chapter, rest of this chapter, and chapter 13 over the next three weeks, uh, that, that's such a key. Uh, as a Christian, be true to your faith. Be true to the Word of God. Stand on His Word and strive. And it's not always easy. I understand that. There's those circumstances that can, we can get caught up in, in situations and relationships, and all these things can strain our, our walk. But, but always keep mindful who you are and what you're called to do and the ultimate purpose of why you're still here. So it's going down to verse 14, and, and this is one right now that uh, this first verse we see here is kind of uh, goes against the grain uh, for the human side of us. He says right here, he says, Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Now the word bless there has the idea to speak well of, to, to 
look to that person, try to find something good about that person. You say, well, some people you can't find anything good. Well, you know, you better not say anything, but look for something good. Uh, if they have something in their family, or something in their job, whatever it is, but, but speak well of them. And that's, remember what I'm saying here now, it, to do that about the one that's hurting you, the one that's persecuting you. And, you know, we, we don't really always feel that good. Even as Christians, sometimes we, we want to just leave them alone or get rid of them, get them out of our life. But he says here to, to bless them, the persecution. And then we go a little bit further. It says, bless and curse not. In other words, don't, don't lash out. Uh, as we look at that, so what he's telling me there, I need to speak well of the one that's persecuting me, and I need to pray for them instead of cursing them. Um, how many times do you struggle with your prayer life? You ever struggle with your prayer life? Sometimes it's hard to know what to pray, and sometimes we feel so far from God. But how about praying for the ones that's hurting you? Praying for that one that's persecuting you. Does call maybe that person that's in your job place, and they, you know they just give you a rough time. Always they're on you about something. They just don't let you let up. Or at school, uh, other people, uh, other students make fun of you or put you down or embarrass you. You know, and you think, wow, if I could, you know, I'd like to get even with them. And he said, no. He says, as a Christian, as a Christian, you are to to speak well of that person and to pray for him. So keep that in mind. Now, this is, this is again, one that, that's doing harm to us. He's not treating us well. And then we get a little bit farther, and this is a little bit easier. This is one of those things that's easy to do. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Hey, there's a, a new baby in the family. A new marriage. Somebody just got married. Or good things happen. Somebody got a promotion. Somebody graduated from high school, graduated from college. All these good things happen. Rejoice. Have fun with them. Enjoy, enjoy the celebration. Enjoy those good times together. Even within the, within the body of Christ, within our physical family, we can do those things. And that's what he's telling you. He's talking here to the church at Rome. And he's saying, here, you believers should rejoice with one another. Have, have a good time with that. And then on the flip side of that, he says, weep with them that weep. Those, those that lose loved ones, that, lose, that they have bad health, that lose jobs and have things in their life that, that causes the, the tears to flow, to sit and, and to, to weep with them, to, to identify with them, to, to have compassion with them. See, so you see, this, this, is, our, this is our call. Uh, a lot of times I know that people have the, the idea if there's something, uh, someone's lost a loved one, and you, you just don't feel comfortable. Well, I don't know what to say. But most of the time, I found out through the years, as I, as I go as a pastor, sometimes I, I don't need to say anything. I just need to be with them and let them pour out their heart, let them talk, or, or just cry with them. It's, it's not what you say. It's that you're there and you show that you care. And that's what we look at. We look at that relationship we have within the body of Christ, how we care for one another. We can have those good times together, the family reunions, the birthday parties, all these things we can enjoy together. And then we can, when it's time to weep, that other side, those things. And it's, that's life, isn't it? There's those good things in life and there's those tough things in life. There's those, those great things and there's those heartaches. And so he says right here, this is what we're to do. He says we're to, to rejoice with them that rejoice and to weep with them that weep. And then we go a little bit further. He says, uh, be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be of the, the same mind one toward another. In other words, what he's saying is, get on the same page. Understand one another. And you know, the idea is that we don't always agree on everything, do we? Uh, it's, we but we need to come to an understanding of one another before we can understand where the other person's coming from. And uh, there might be times that if in different areas of life that we just won't agree on it, but we can still be of the same mind in the fact that we can understand what one another is doing, what they're, where they're coming from. And that's what he's talking about. So that when, when tough times come, so we can identify with them and help them through these times. Be with one another and they can be with you. It's not always the idea of uh, we have to do something. Sometimes we're on the receiving end of it. And we need to be able to receive that, that love, that affection, those, that weeping and, and uh, rejoicing we talked about a moment ago. But when we come to the idea, I'm going to be of the same mind one towards another. I'm going to be in that same, so on that same page. Uh, the church, one of the things in the church, it's important that the church people that come together as a, not as a universal body, but as a local body, be of the same mind. Uh, we want to have the same understanding. So there's those areas of, of uh, worship, 
that we worship in different ways and, and we want to be of the same mind so that, that we don't have conflict, so we don't have uh, dissension within the body. So that's one of the things that you can avoid if you're, if you're of like mind, if you're of a like manner and the way you want to worship. And then he goes up a little, a little bit further. He says, mind not high things. Um, the idea is that we don't want to uh, think of things, those uh, uh, things that are, are uh, what I want to say here, they're, uh, those kind of things that are the position and power and those kind of things. We, we don't want to set our mind on those kind of things. He says, here, don't mind not the high things, but condescend the men of low to Satan. Now, that, is, that doesn't mean you look down on anybody, okay? He said, what you do, you don't look down at someone because uh, maybe you have a great job and, and they don't have much, or you, you, you have health and they don't have health, or whatever you want to look at. But you don't look down on people. We, we go and we identify with them. It, it's, we, in, in uh, this world, this nation that we're living in today, it, it is so easy to see this division. We hear people talking about you know the, the class dissension between the wealthy and the middle class and the, uh, the poor people. Uh, we see those that, of different races and have different uh, ideas about what's right and wrong, about the immigrants and the legal immigrants and illegal immigrants and all these kind of things we look at. And, and it's easy to look down on people. And the idea is that we don't, we don't look down upon them. We understand. We have compassion. We have care for them, especially within the body of Christ. There's, there's no room within the body of Christ for us to be high-minded. There's no room within the body of Christ that we should ever look down on one another. We should always be, what does the scripture teach us? From the beginning to the end practically, edify, edify, edify. Build up one another. Build up the body of Christ. We need, listen, we need to be the example in this world. We talk about the chaotic conditions in America today. The church... True Christians need to be the example of love and respect, of discipline and honor. We need to be the ones. It, always, it amazes me how that uh, so many people get so upset when you don't agree with them. Uh, we hear, and I hear time after time, you know, I have my rights, my, I have a right of free speech, and I have a right to, to express myself. And that's true. Within the context of, of a legal, what's, what's legal and moral, you have that right. But those of differing opinion have a right to do that too. But it's, and we live in an age today where they want, you want to be shouted down if you have a differing opinion. This, this tolerance seems like it's a one-way street sometimes. You need to be tolerant of me, but I don't need to be tolerant of you. And the sad part is that gets within the church. So I'm not talking about that outside the church. I'm talking about within the church. And, and you know, one of the things that really uh, divides today as we look at it is, is the politics. You know, the Democrats, Republicans, uh, liberals, conservatives, the progressives, you know, on and on. You see all these different ideas. Well, you can have a different point of view. You can look at something and say, this is the way I like to see it, and this person over here says, I like to see it like this. You can have those different views. That doesn't mean you have to be at odds with one another in conflict. You should be able to communicate your different views, and if you can't come to an understanding, if you can't come to an agreement, at least you can agree to disagree. That your view, you're not going to change yours, and they're not going to change theirs, so just you go on. There's other things in life beside these things that divide. So when we look at what he's telling us right there, he says, don't, don't condescend, but be not wise in your own eyes. Don't think too highly of yourself. Don't, don't think you're something when you're not. Uh, if we go back up into that same chapter, into verse number 3, he says here, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly or rightly or self-discipline according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Don't, don't build yourself up. Again, that gets back to that word I talked about in the beginning was hypocrisy. Don't be hypocritical. Don't, don't think you're something you're not. Don't build yourself up there. And that's what he's telling us. He said, as a Christian now, don't do it. Live the kind of life that's going to be Christ-like. Back at the beginning of the year here at Hurricane Baptist Church, we start off with a, a, a theme for the year. And followers of Christ, following Christ was our theme for this year. And so as we look at this portion of Scripture today and over the next three weeks, chapter 13, I keep that in mind that as a follower of Christ, 
What would Jesus do? And I'm not a big fan of looking at everything and saying, what would Jesus do? I think we should know what Jesus would do. But sometimes it don't hurt to step back and to see, look at his life and see how he acted and reacted and interacted with those around him, with all the situations and the circumstances. And we'll get into that a little bit more when we get to chapter 13. But the idea is that we want to look to Christ and, and see how He dealt with men and we want to deal with them the same way. So we get to verse 17. He says, Recompense or repay to no man evil for evil. In other words, don't, don't repay the, the, the bad for bad or ill for ill. Don't try to get even. If, if you remember back in the Old Testament, it talked about the, the law said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And so people look at it and say, wait a minute. The Bible says eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. Uh, that was for the civil government, not for the individual. That wasn't for if you got hurt, so you had a right to hurt that person back. If he lost, you lost an eye because of what he did, he has a right to take your eye off. Uh, for one thing, they wanted to, the idea was to keep things within context. Uh, if you got a broken arm and didn't give you the right to go out and cut the man's head off. So it was up to civil government, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. Fairness. That's what it was all about. Let the, let the, the penalty and the crime match up. Don't, don't give a severe uh, a penalty for a minor crime and don't give a, a light penalty for a major crime. So he says right here, don't, don't you get into it. He says, uh, uh, provide things honest the word honest has the idea of being good in the sight of all men. And the idea is when we look ahead, he says, provider, consider in advance. Stop and think about what you're going to say. Stop and think about what you're going to do. And ahead of time, so what will be the repercussion? What will be the consequence if I say this or if I do this? What's, what's going to be the outcome? Is it going to be a great outcome? Is it going to be something I want or is it going to be something I wouldn't want? You know, sometimes we something happens, somebody says something to us or somebody does something to us and right away we open our mouth and we don't think, we say something and we just think, oh, if I could only take that back. But words once gone out, they can't be gone back. An action taken, somebody that reached up and hit somebody or slapped somebody or pushed somebody or hurt somebody, once that happens, you can't take it back. You can ask for forgiveness, but the injury, the emotional or the, the physical injury that take place, has taken place can't be changed. Life goes on from that point. So that's what he's saying right there. Don't do that. Provide or think ahead of what you're going to do so it comes out good in the sight of all men. And here's verse 18 now. If it be possible, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now there are sometimes, I know in life, I've been around enough years, I know there are situations, some people you just can't get along with. I mean, some people just will not, will not uh, give in. They won't try to get along. They just were constant, uh, repulsive. They're constantly after you. Uh, they just, no matter what you do, no matter how you treat them, you just can't get along with them. So he says, as much as possible, you can't make somebody like you. But you can treat them in such a way that they don't have an excuse to mistreat you. And that's what he's talking about. He says here, as much as possible, that as life in you, you look for ways to have peace, to live peaceably with all men. You look for it, you search for it. We get back to the prayer we talked about earlier there. We pray for those that persecute us. We pray for those that, that rebuke us, that push us away. He says here that we have that. And then go to verse 13, or 19, excuse me. Verse 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Don't, don't get, try to get even yourself. Christian, remember? We're Christians. We're going to live like Christ lived. We're going to follow His example. The Bible says we're to be conformed to His image over here. And uh, what's it say in Romans 8? Uh, 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, what? To be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. We're to be predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so we need to act and live like Jesus did, so people see Christ in us. That they can see him in us and how we deal with one another, how we deal with circumstances and situations in life. 
we're in this world for a short period of time, whether you live to be 40 years old or 100 years old. It's still a short period of time compared to eternity. And what we're seeing right here, he says, this is the way you're to live. You're to try to live peaceably. Don't avenge yourselves. But he says here, rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. When he, we look at that, he says, give place unto wrath. That's God's wrath. In other words, I get my wrath, my anger, my frustration, my uh, inclination to try to get even. See, put that out of the way, put that out in the back of your mind. He says, and God will repay, saith the Lord. We had, the problem we see sometimes, oh, and if, I don't know about you, but sometimes we get a little impatient. I do, get a little impatient. And if somebody hurts us or says something to us, and, and we, we look at this and he says, uh, don't, don't strike back. I don't try to get even. Wait and let God work. Now we're talking to believers. We're talking to believers. And so what he's telling me then is there's a day of reckoning. For that person that did that to you, there's a day that God will take care of it. So you get on with your life. You get on with your walk. You get on with your, your showing Christ in your life, demonstrating Christ in your life. So we see right here, he says that he's going to repay. And therefore, if thine enemy hunger, in verse 20, feed him. If, if he thirst, give him to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. If we want to get even, if you, if you want to get even the, with the one that hurts you, with the one that's done things to you, the one that's pushed you away that you can't get along with, if you want to give with him, treat him nice. Treat her nice. Do things for him. Uh, if, if he's thirsty, uh, give him something to eat. If he's hungry, give him something to drink. The idea is that, that when he stops and looks at you and sees, uh, sees how you're acting, it makes him feel shame or makes him feel disappointed in himself. And therefore, he, he's, he's suffering that shame. Uh, I read in one of the commentaries that uh, back in the days of Egypt, years and years back before this time, if uh, a man was demonstrating how bad he felt, if he, he was shameful, he did something, he put a pan of hot coals on his head and he would walk around with that. And that they, the commentator had the idea that that's what he was referring to there. Uh, sometimes it, the idea is too that to make it feel so bad they feel like there's the coals of fire on their head. But the thing of it is, we know that uh, when somebody does bad, if you strike out, do you ever have somebody hurt your feeling and you strike out in anger? Did that help the situation? Uh, did that really improve your relationship with one another? Don't work, does it? The anger. And we get down to verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. He says, don't, don't let the evil overcome you. Don't let it damage your testimony. Don't let it ruin your testimony. The devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he devour, and he'll use these kind of things. If you have trouble with your temper, if you have trouble with anger, uh, he's going to give, do everything he can to cause you to lose your temper. He's going to do things because he knows if you lose your temper, you're going to damage your testimony. And people look at us and they see how we react. And it's so important. Um, as a Christian, Jesus said, if you're, you're going to be a follower of mine, then you have to act like I act. You have to live like I live. Not in the, not in the walking up and down the, the dusty roads of, of Jerusalem and Israel at that day, but with the attitude here, here is the Son of God, 100% man, 100% God, 100% of the time. And he's out there and he's going to die for men. He's going to die for the, the sinner, for the enemies, for his enemies. Remember those Pharisees and those Sadducees? How they cursed him. They even sought for ways. They tried to get the game and throw him off of the off a cliff one time there. Uh, they always was plotting how to kill him, how to get rid of him. And he went to the cross and died for him. See, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So if you're listening to this this morning and, and you're not saved, you just happened on this, this uh, program and you, you're not saved, I want you to stop and think about what Jesus did for you. 
you were his enemy. You are his enemy. You're God's enemy. If you're lost, you're God's enemy. But Christ already paid the price to buy you out of the slave market of sin. He, bought, he paid the price to redeem you into the family of God. And so he says here, be not overcome by evil. Don't let evil of the world damage your testimony. Don't get so caught up in, in pity parties sometimes, getting feeling sorry for ourselves. We look at, oh, how bad it is, how I'm being treated. And he says, don't get caught up. Don't let that evil come overcome you. Don't let that happen. You stay firm on your faith. And he goes, goes a little bit further, that last part of verse 21. But overcome evil, but with good. We know that, that evil is darkness and good is light. And when you walk into a dark room and you flip on that light switch, what happens? The darkness is gone. And that's what you and I, we have the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the lost, the world is in darkness. We have the light of the world within us. We have the gospel of Christ. Jesus said he's the light of the world. And we have that responsibility to take that light into the world. But we can't do that. We can't be that light. We can't overcome evil with good if we're going to succumb and act with evil. And in this day of all the riots and the protesting, and you know, uh, the protesters, protesters, I know they have a freedom of speech, and you have a right to speak up and, uh, and to say things, and we're going to talk about that more in the next few weeks. But the idea is that we need to do it as Christ would have us to do it. Exercise those rights, but we cannot overcome the evil with evil. We has the Bible tells us. It's not what I'm saying. It's what God says. Overcome the evil with good. Overcome the evil with love. Did we just read about there. He said that uh, avenge not yourselves. God will take care of avenging the wrongs. He will make things right. Not you, not me. And we need to step back and look at my life as a Christian. And again, over the next three weeks, we'll be looking at chapter 13. I want you to, this, uh, you might not want to watch any more of these. Uh, we'll probably be on at least another week or two uh, doing it this way before we get back into the church house. But go through chapter 13 of Romans. Get you a commentary, get something. Go through that and see as a Christian what he's telling to us. He's telling us in that, this chapter, in chapter 13, how we should live in this world today. And I want you to look at your own life, look in that spiritual mirror and say, yes, I, this is how I'm living. I'm striving, I'm doing the best I can to, to emulate, to show Christ in my life. And if you're not, you need to get on your knees in prayer and say, Lord, forgive me and help me to be that testimony, to be that witness, to draw people to Jesus. I want to be a light in this dark world. And He'll enable you. He'll strengthen you so you can do what He's called you to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we do just thank you for this time that we can come together and as we look at this book of Romans, Lord, what a, a powerful letter this is that Paul wrote to the church at Rome. And we pray, Father, that as we look at our lives that we would be an image of Christ, that people in the world could see Christ in us, that other believers could see Christ in us. We want to be a, a help. We want to be a strength. We want to be show a light in this dark world. So we pray for those that are watching this, that those that are Christians, we pray that they would look at their own life and they would see where they stand, what their life is like as a Christian. Do they have the testimony? Do they have the witness that people could say, yes, I truly see Christ in their life? For those that don't know Christ, we pray this would be the day, that this would be the hour, that they'd understand it, that you, you've kept them alive until now and that they need to remember that they're, they're a sinner. They deserve to die for their sin. And they need to repent, turn from the sin, and turn to the Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, and put their faith and trust in that shed blood as payment for their sin. Just believe what you said. And they will have salvation. They'll have eternal life. The Lord, it's all in your hands. And we pray that you would work in a way that would be a blessing to you. And we pray that we'd be a blessing to you and a blessing to others. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.